Hey guys, it's Samantha with Black Nation News, and today I just wanted to talk about Soho Karen and how she has been charged with a hate crime. Um, I just watched a small clip of her um, her interview with Gail King, and uh, first of all, I want to say, why does Gail King and Oprah Winfrey always give these racist people a platform to... I don't know, just to like look like they're a victim, like with the Michael Jackson fake victims, those grown ass men that were trying to claim they had been touched by Michael Jackson at way after he's dead, they're still dragging his name in the dirt. I mean, it's like, just go sit your ass down and they're only doing it because they know he's still, his estate still has money. They're greedy. These people are ruthless. And then for Gail King to give Soho Karen a platform, I just think it's disgusting. I'm like, let her ass go on Fox News or something. Like, why does she get to talk to a black person? And I just don't, I don't feel like Gail King and Oprah Winfrey give black people that same pat, like that same respect or that same like space where you can feel safe to tell your side of the story, so to speak. So anyway, anyway, so I'm going to play this clip really quickly of Soho Karen and what she said in the clip. And I had a real, I took a real issue to it. Phone video shows Mia Ponsetto accusing 14-year-old Keon Harold Jr. of stealing her iPhone last month. Ponsetto was arraigned over the weekend and freed on supervised release. She is charged with attempted robbery, attempted grand larceny, endangering the welfare of a child, and attempted assault. We spoke with Ponsetto and her attorney, that Sharon Gatan, just hours before her arrest last week. This morning, we begin where we left off on Friday. You seem to have attacked this teenager about the phone, and then it turned out he didn't even have your phone. Oh, okay, so let's that's you, the thing. Do you I mean, want to get to that you're, part? You're saying, look, because I'm 22 years old. You're 22 phone. years old, but you are old enough to know better. Oh, the hotel so I will didn't say have you're my, 22. Right, I Gail, get it. Enough. The no, hotel no, did no, have my phone. They have my phone. I have my phone. The hotel did end up having my phone. I did get my belongings returned to me. So, maybe it wasn't him, but at the same time, how is it so that uh, as soon as I get asked to leave the premises uh, after I had accused this person of stealing my phone, how is it that all of a sudden they just miraculously have my phone when I come back? And the two, and uh, the the, it didn't seem as if uh, my accusations really bothered the the son and the father because they were just uh, enjoying a nice meal right after this whole. Uh, thing. I wasn't racial profiling whatsoever. I'm a woman. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm like a woman of color. I'm, I'm a woman. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm like a woman of color. I'm. I'm. Italian, Greek, Puerto Rican. You keep saying you're Puerto Rican. Does that mean that you can't be racist because you're saying you're a woman of color? Is that what you mean? Exactly. Well, I, I would disagree that people of color can be racist too. Do you I don't like when people use the terms people of color, woman of women of color, men of color, man of color. I don't really hear men of color as much, but. Yeah, it's usually like trying to throw women all together for like some makeup brand or yeah, like, yeah, I decided to do this for women of color. It's like, that's not a thing. That's not a thing. Just like BIPOC, that's like their latest thing they're going with. That's not a thing either. Like, I don't even know what BIPOC means, but when I heard that, I was like, live it again. I'm like, here we go. We keep trying to throw us all in this group, like the minority, BIPOC people of color. I hate all of it. So the acronym BIPOC refers to black indigenous and other people of color and aims to emphasize the historic oppression of black and indigenous people. What? How the fuck are you emphasizing the historic oppression of black and indigenous people? First of all, you're putting us in a group with the people that were all like some of the indigenous people were native Americans who act those Indians because yes, we can, I'm, I'm pretty damn sure they won't admit it. They won't tell the truth for nothing, white people, but I'm pretty sure black people were already in America when Christopher Columbus thought he was discovering something. 
we were here just like the Native Americans were here. So, yes, I do believe that some of the African Americans, um, their ancestors are indigenous people of America. So you have that group. But you also have the indigenous people that's thrown into that group with that with the other people. Even though we're not really being acknowledged, black people never getting get the credit we deserve. So you have Native Americans, they enslaved black people as well. So how sick is that, that they keep trying to group us together? And that's another thing that pisses me off. Every time I bring up reparations, I don't know why most, like a lot of white people, they always say, well, what about Native Americans? Or we can, even Biden's dumbass, we can include it. We could talk about reparations for black people if we include Native Americans. No, we're not going to include them. I'm not going to include my, my family's former slave master in my reparations. How fucked up is that? How backwards is that? How vile is that for you to expect me to be okay with that? I'm not okay with it. And just this term alone explains why, like, why the fuck are we being blended in black American people, African American people, ADOS, our history is not the same as everyone else's. So you don't get to just group me, lump me in with all these other random races and random ethnicities or whatever the hell they want to go, go with and be like, you're, you're all the same. You know, you almost experience historic oppression. No, we really don't. We're not the same because I'm black and I'm African American and I don't even get the same benefits as an African who comes over here, who has a country to attach to like a Nigerian or Ghanaian or someone from Botswana. Like they, they're coming from a different background. A lot of them that come over here have a lot of money. A lot of people don't even know Nigerians tend, I think they have more wealth in their households than white people. So, and we're not going to go into that history of how that probably happened. But my point is we're not all the same. This country is extremely racist and it's extremely divided and it's too divided and racist to just lump everyone together because the issue with that, just like with affirmative action, that's my favorite example once one day one minute is for black african americans as part of like you know atonement or they try to call it reparations they also give us fucking programs everyone else gets money we're the only ones to get programs and shit when it's time to give us some reparations but they give you reparate give us reparations you know to we fight for our own civil rights that we should have already had and then next thing you know like everyone else kind of slides into that group into that package with us like it's like oh it's for minority so you got the asians pissed off because they feel like they should be having you know they're they they feel like they're not really benefiting with their affirmative action it's like you shouldn't even have it to begin with then you got the white women who use affirmative action they benefit from it more than anyone how does that make sense you're part of the dominant class of the country your husbands and your fathers are the white males who own everything and control everything and make the laws. And it's, it's ludicrous. And then you have black women who are trying to run off and be feminists. Give me a break. Like, no, we're not. Don't blend me in with anybody. And this is exact reason why I don't want to be blended in because Soho Karen, I don't know what the hell her real name is something. So they're interviewing her and she's basically saying like, I can't be racist because I'm a woman of color. You see how they just throw that right back in your face? You see, they, she said that to Gail, an African-American woman. And she and Gail deserved that. Her and Oprah with their money and not helping out the black community, having asses, she deserved that. Because she probably uses that term all day long. And so it's like, yeah, that's like to me doubly being victimized as an African-American person. So first you victimize this black child because he dared to have an iPhone. Like he, him and his father, they couldn't possibly own, like have the money to buy an iPhone. So you first victimize them that way. And then you secondly, like throw it in our faces. Like, I, like you're trying to get out of it by saying, I can't possibly be racist because I'm a person of color as well. And it's, it's vile. It's like, no. It doesn't even matter. Like, even if you want to call yourself a person of color with me, which I don't, I reject. That doesn't, it doesn't matter. But that's what happens when they lump you in with all these other random fucking groups of people that don't share your history. These people just continue to get to benefit off your fucking back. They get to continue to keep 
victimizing you over and over and over. So if she gets like, oh, you know, gets out of her case because they they slapped her with the hate crime, which I'm really shocked they did that. But anyways, they slapped her with the hate. They, I guess they added that charge or I don't know, as upgraded. I don't know what, what that how that happens, but they added a hate crime to her charges. I think that's how you do it. And it's like, even though they did that, I just don't see her really getting any real punishment, you know? And I feel like part of her not getting punishment is she's going to try that bullshit, um, response. Like, you know what, like if she testifies and say, well, I'm a woman of color, I've been oppressed too. You know what I'm saying? I could just see her putting on that show because she's so fucking entitled. I cannot see her going down without a fight. She's so in love with herself when she's not cute at all. Like, I'm like, is her face swollen? Like, I don't know what was going on her little, them cheeks or whatever. I'm like, she probably got some work done because I think she's it's in Cali, shallow as shit. You know how that goes. They claim, I guess they said she has a lot of money. I don't know. If you have a lot of money, you can go buy yourself another iPhone. Like, you, you shouldn't be trying to take an iPhone from a child. But anyway, so... It's just like, you know, this is why black people, African-Americans, we need to be very specific about what our tribe is called and who we are. And we can't subscribe to just some of anything. We cannot blend ourselves with anyone else because no one else has our history. And it's a slippery slope if you start saying like you're lumping yourself with other people. Like it's okay for people to work with you if they want to, if they want to help us get reparations or certain rights and privileges, etc. That's wonderful. But you're still going to be like what you are and I'm what I am. We don't need to blend in our, our ethnicities or our groups together to go fight for things. No one else does that but us. And when white people fight for shit, everyone doesn't suddenly become a person of no color. Like if white women decide I want to fight for some, some work benefits and, and higher pay, the women she's marching with, we don't, black women, African-American women, we don't become a woman of no color because we joined forces with her. And see, whenever you reverse things around, it sounds so ridiculous. But somehow, African-Americans continue to allow people to rope us in with the ridiculousness on our end. We allow it to be happening over on our side. Like, we just, okay, yeah, yeah, women of color, we're, we're, we're person of color. Give me a break. And I remember when I was in school, not in school, when I was working on a corporate plantation, like I used to say people of color, because I feel like it's like a way that people like white people are not offend, as offended. So I can see in like some situations you might say it just to be nice. But honestly, we're at a we're at a such a we're at such an impasse. We're at such a place in this country now that everything is so out there with the racism, the white supremacy. It's been proven time and time again that it is alive and well. It exists. I mean, everyone's acknowledged it all the way up to the president, the highest office in the in the country. So I don't think you have to say something extra different to not offend people. You can say you're African American. I was just talking to a white woman and she was like she was like black or African American. I mean, what do you guys want to go about? I told her really either one is fine, but honestly, you guys, I like to I prefer african-american because that's the one title that cannot be blended in with everybody and mom everybody under the sun cannot get blended in if i say i'm an african-american so because if you say black you can have jamaicans joining in trinidadians coming in africans from africa who literally came over here in the 80s coming in uh haitians all these black groups these people who identify who can identify as black too because they have black skin they can all slide in and be like yeah well reparations for me too because i'm black also so we need to really be specific about who we are we have to learn from our history and move you know act accordingly do what we're supposed to do to get the justice that our ancestors need and that they deserve and that we need and deserve it it's just there's no other way we can't we got we got through this by ourselves we're going to end this by ourselves there's no bringing in all these groups all of a sudden at the at the end of the day when it's time for the rewards
So that's all I had to say. I was just really bothered when she tried that. Soho Karen, I don't, I don't really even like calling her that because I don't like her. But <laughs> Mia something, what I cannot remember her name. I literally just saw it, but I can't pronounce it, so I don't remember it. But I really was triggered. Whenever I hear the person of color thing, I literally just bris- like cringe. Like I can't explain it. I don't like. To, I don't like to hear the term. It's almost like hearing the N word to me like it just really is offensive because when you say people of color to me it's like you're trying to just like what white supremacists are doing with critical race theory I feel like you're basically trying to erase all my history and you're trying to act like I'm the same as all these other groups of people like whatever race they these white people and these Asian people and I'm not the same Nowhere near am I the same. I don't have the same. I don't get the same benefits as them. I don't have the same history as them. I don't get the same, you know, benefit of the doubt that they might get if they walk into the store. People are just going to assume I stole something or or they're going to treat me a certain way just because they think I'm beneath them or I'm a rude person because we have a ster- we have so many negative stereotypes attached to us thanks to white supremacist media. So. <sighs> Just, you know, people, just black African-American people, just try to work on it. I know it's a process. I know we're used to, we've been brainwashed and all that. But when you know better, do better. The woman dubbed Soho Karen pleads not guilty to hate crime charges in New York. It comes months after Mia Ponsetto, you see her there on your screen, is seen on surveillance video tackling a black teenager. She's accused... 15-year-old Keon Harold of stealing her cell phone, and turns out that was a lie. Sharon, we remember this video. Just looking at it just triggers me because you know if the she was on the other foot, this would have been a totally different situation. Now she's pleading not guilty, and her lawyer even just saying that it's shameful that she was even charged with a hate crime, but you know how that goes, Sharon. She's unwell and she absolutely needed to be charged with a hate crime. And you're right, if the shoe was on the other foot, somebody might have ended up dead, okay? We know that, okay? Mm -hmm. So, she's unwell, and please stop giving her exclusive interviews. You know who I'm talking to. She's not worthy. What has she got to say? We've seen it all. Thank you, Lauren. So, that's it, guys. Until I talk to you again, take care of yourselves and each other. Peace, love, and light. I'm gone. Bye.